Hello and welcome to the beautiful Boulder Canyon, just west of Boulder, Colorado. We have snow, we have clouds, we've got some beautiful scenery, and behind me here is a beautiful Volvo. How's this for scenery? <laughs> this is the Volvo XC60 Recharge T8 Inscription. That is a lot to remember. But basically, the XC60 is the middle child of the CUV lineup. You have the XC40 right below it, and the XC90 above it with the full three row of seating. So the recharge will actually denote a plug-in hybrid option. And with that, you get a battery capability of about 18 miles if you plug it in. And once that's depleted, it just becomes a standard hybrid. And by standard, I don't mean exactly standard. Uh, with the Volvo, you have a supercharged, turbocharged, inline four, two liter engine. That's a lot going on under the hood. We'll peek at that later. Um, but basically with these Volvos, you have that engine across the board. And then with that, you can get turbocharged, turbocharged and supercharged, or all of those with hybrid capability. So this recharge has the plug-in hybrid, and I've been using that for this drive up here. It got me all the way here without depleting the battery. Pretty neat. But let's go take a closer look at this gorgeous car specced in denim blue metallic. You have 20 inch alloy wheels. Um, you have the plug-in hybrid cap right here with your J1772 connector. Along the bottom, you have some chrome, kind of matches the wheels, along with your little recharge badge right there. Up along the windows, you have that same chrome accent, which is then extended on the roof with the sort of roof rails. You'll see the sunroof up above there. You can see through here the heads-up display. And then coming around the front, you have the famous, very eccentric Volvo headlights. It's almost like a Thor's hammer matching their Scandinavian heritage. Um, and then you have LEDs all across the board. Down here, you would normally have fog lights on a higher trim. And then you have parking sensors here, there, and on the other side. And a couple chrome accents here in the front too. Chrome along the grill. Some cool little text right here, full LED system. Love that. It's the little things I love. And then coming around to the back, we have your normal fuel filler cap on the opposite side of the plug-in cap. And then the very stereotypical Volvo rear end. I really like their styling overall. It's gorgeous, it's subdued, it's not too eccentric or out there. It just looks nice, it's plain and simple. You have some more chrome down the bottom here with the exhaust tips, dual exhaust tips. And these distinct tail lights, all LED once again, all the way up to the top there with the third light at the very top underneath the little spoiler area. Here you have the badge for the T8 all wheel drive recharge and XC60 on this side. And you can kind of immediately tell on the outside when you're driving by someone else's Volvo. If you see that part sticking up out of their dash, you know they dished out for the fantastic Bowers & Wilkins sound system. More on that when we talk about the interior. So overall, it is quite a beautiful car, um, just all around. It's not crazy looking, but it looks good. And this is actually a fantastic color that I would probably choose myself. It's very nice, both on the website as well as in person. That with the alloy wheels and the blonde Napa leather interior, it is beautifully specced. But let's take a look under the hood. So you can hear it kind of purring away right now, which means the battery is probably depleted too much to actually use the climate control on battery power. It is so cold out here. I have the inside waiting to be warmed up for me to just go in and recharge my own internal temperature. But yeah, not a whole lot to see kind of from the outside, but there's a lot going on underneath there. Again, this is a turbocharged, supercharged two liter inline four with the hybrid system. And that makes a total of about 400 horsepower, which is pretty impressive for this kind of vehicle. And I wouldn't say it's that quick, but it is quick enough for most people. And I never really felt like I was lacking power, especially up here at altitude. I'm at about 7,000 feet right now. 
and I always felt like I had the power I needed to really enjoy my cruise. And again, coming around to the back, we have the rear lift gate, which we can actually do with our feet. Pretty good size in here. Um, we have the charging cable, which I have out right now because I was letting it dry off. It actually stows right here most of the time. And yeah, it's a good, good size storage space for the type of CUV it is. Um, and then you have really interesting air suspension that can be lowered or raised. Very cool feature. And then when you close the latch, you can actually choose to close it or close and lock it. But it is really cold out here. So let's go take a look inside the XC60. Welcome to the interior of the Volvo XC60 Recharge T8 inscription. Fortunately, the interior is much more minimal than the actual name of the car. Um, first things first, it's fantastic. It's minimalist and I love it. But let me explain why. So first, let's look at materials. Um, often that is kind of what you subconsciously focus on when you're sitting in the interior. And it's kind of what gives you the impression of how nice it really is. In the Volvo, which you know are known for nice interiors, you have a lot of leather and soft touches. You have the leather up on the top of the dash, um, as well as you know the seats, which are Napa leather, uh, in this case, the blonde color. And the steering wheel is really interesting two-tone, which I really like. It kind of gives the appearance of a smaller, sportier steering wheel. Um, but it's actually, you know, full size, very comfortable one. Um, and so it has the seat color on the inside and the dark color on the outside. So of course you have all black interior, the steering wheel is just black. Um, below the top leather, you have this kind of interesting wood accent, which goes across the whole side of the interior, um, kind of separating the two colors. And you also have some of that down the center console here. Um, there are a variety of woods you can choose from. This one's kind of like a bleached driftwood look. I'm a huge fan. It's actually got some nice texture to it as well. I love real wood in a car. And with this price tag, you would expect it. The soft touches continue down to where you would rest your arms and your hands. It's just a nice place to sit. Um, and let's look at the seats really quick. They are very comfortable. It's not what I thought at first. You know, sometimes you sit in a car and you think, wow, this is like a cloud. And the Volvo seats are like, almost like a cloud that you know is better for you, which means it's not quite as comfortable at first, if that makes any sense. It's strange, you have kind of ridges and that actually keeps you more postured. The drivers and passenger seats are fully adjustable. Um, they have, you know, the thigh adjuster, which will lengthen and shorten based on how long your upper legs are. You can even adjust the bolsters to go in and out to hold you better. And the lumbar support can go in and out as well as up and down. So that's very cool. Um, they are, again, very comfortable. And I like that they give driver and passenger equal treatment. It would be remiss if I didn't talk about the Piano Black, which is actually not too overwhelming in this car. Um, and Piano Black, you know, it's kind of a striking material of you know journalists as well as just the general public. It looks nice when it's beautifully cleaned and polished and dusted, which is rare, um, unless you have someone following you around cleaning every surface, which I guess could be more possible with COVID. Um, but the, the steering wheel itself has a bunch of controls here. Not too many. Um, they are very nicely laid out and easy to use, easy to remember, but it's all piano black. Just the controls, just the parts you actually touch, which means every fingerprint you leave is there until you actually wipe it off. And it's very visible. I, mean, I haven't driven this too much and I'm already eagerly awaiting to wipe down the interior. The same goes down here with the center console. You have this really cool crystal shifter which is included with the recharge models, um, you know, the ones with the hybrid capabilities. And it's very interesting. It has a, like a 3D designation in it that says Aura 4 is Sweden. I haven't done the research on what that is. Hey, Editor Jordan here. So I have done the research now. Aura 4 is, is a Swedish company that makes glass crystal for over 100 years now. And for the Volvo, the XC40, XC60, and XC90, they make all of them by hand, 
at minimum a crew of four are manning each furnace to make these awesome shift knobs. Just, yeah, so cool. Anyways. It just looks cool, it feels cool. It makes me wanna shift into park and drive in neutral as much as possible. Um, of course, everything else though is piano black. You do have this interesting engine start stop dial. Um, it twists to the right, almost like 30 degrees or so, and then bounces back. And that's how you start and stop your Volvo. And then below that is a drive mode selector. It's a roller controller. And uh, you have to actually press it in and then you can choose your drive mode. So you can have constant all wheel drive, peer, which is eco drive, and that's only available if you have enough battery power. Then you have hybrid, which they say everyday use, individual for personal driving preferences. You can adjust all sorts of things to be your own ideal setup. And then you have power for sporty driving and off-road for rough road. Very cool. Um, this has the air suspension equipped, which can be dynamically controlled and you can adjust how you know harsh it rides or how soft. And if you put it into say off-road mode, it's really interesting. The vehicle will rise up and be prepared for whatever ground clearance you may need um, within the Volvo limitations, of course. These dials I've mentioned have this interesting rough texture. It's almost like a hammered metal look. Um, I really like it. I wish they actually used more of the interior in the interior, but it's really only on dials. Speaking of dials, they have a volume dial and I love that. Nothing grinds my gears more than the cars who think they can do away with the dials in lieu of touchscreen buttons. Um, for volume on your music, you just want to crank it or drop it way down in case you get in the car and forget you were blasting it last time you were driving. It's a great addition. I actually wish they added a couple more knobs for the interior climate control, but I'm not too mad. Um, it's very easy to adjust that anyways. And then uh, this center console again has these wood parts. And what's interesting is it opens in two sections. You have this main one here which is the woods are kind of like small slits that kind of roll back into their own compartment, which will reveal your cup holders as well as a wireless charging pad. If your phone is big enough, you actually can't charge it without opening the last little tiny wooden door, which then gives you enough space. Otherwise, the screen will actually say, error, there's something obstructing the charging. So that's kind of interesting that they had two separate doors, if you will. Um, but the top one just hides your 12 volt outlet as well as, you know, little interesting sloping area for change or something like that. And then you have your center console where your phone will plug in for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Um, it's a decent size felt lined with a rubber bottom. It's pretty small as far as center consoles go, but it's, it's there, which is nice. And then for both the driver and passenger, you have heated and ventilated seats, which can be run simultaneously. So I typically have Heating, ventilation, and steering wheel heating all on one. They go from one to three. So the infotainment is quite easy to use. It's a little sluggish when you first start up the car. It's a relatively small portrait oriented screen, um, but it does fit basically what you need. And, you know, it condenses Apple CarPlay a little bit, but not so much that it's too annoying. And swiping over to the left brings you your menu of applications. Uh, there's a lot in here, including you know air quality, weather. You got Spotify and Pandora built into it. You can jump over to Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth, radio settings, iPod in case you still have an iPod. Also with the screen, you have this menu button down here at the bottom that will always bring you home, or you can press it again to show what you do with the controls. So drag down to access settings and swipe to access all the apps. Um, that helped me kind of figure it out in the beginning. It's nice that they thought of throwing that hint in there. Inside settings, you have a lot of controls. My car lets you, you know, adjust the displays, which is kind of nice. The display theme in front of the driver, which this is a, I think, 12.3 inch all digital gauge cluster. You can control the themes you want it to be. Um, they have glass, minimalistic, performance, and chrome rings. I don't think any of them look that amazing. The minimalistic is, you know, nice and minimal, almost too much so. The chrome rings, you know, they're fake, but I found that to be my favorite. The glass and performance just look too fake and cheesy for my liking. 
Um, but it's something else I should point out here while we're a couple menu items deep is the weird placement of back or close. I feel like typically you look at the upper left or right. Um, typically upper left for phones, you know, other things that have this kind of tablet style interface. But for some reason, Volvo put them at the very bottom. So it takes you a bit to get used to it, but I'll take it. You can adjust what's in the heads up display, which I love by the way, it's great. We'll talk about more on that in the driving section and the background of the driver display. The default is nothing, which I think it literally looks like it's kind of wasting space. There's so much screen real estate and it's just taken by these two big dials with this big empty spot in the middle. You can show current media, which is awesome. So there, now I'm reminded, hey, I'm playing Taylor Swift. Or map, which is my favorite. It actually makes the dials a little smaller and brings up the map in the middle. Plain and simple. I like that. That's probably my favorite way to drive this vehicle. So let's do that. And actually, I'm going to go back to minimalist. Yeah, there we go. And then you have all these safety systems you can adjust. Um, Volvo is very safety centered. They put a lot of emphasis on driver safety. They're known for it. They have a great reputation. So they actually have all their safety systems as standard on all their Volvos, all trims. That's a really good move. I feel like that's, you know, most of it is software. There are sensors and such, but it does simplify engineering to include all those on all the cars. And the software bits, there's really no reason not to include them if you really care about the safety of the drivers. Um, the exception to that would be the pilot assist, which is almost like their quote unquote full self driving. Um, it's not full, but it does keep you, you know, in the lane, keeps your acceleration based on the cruise control you set. And you can adjust that, you know, based on how far back you want to be from the car in front of you. The steering wheel controls themselves do have a lot of nice, you know, adjustability. You have the volume and uh, music controls on the right here. Um, these arrows up and down are volume. They don't say that specifically, and it took me a little bit to figure it out, um, but you know, enough playing around showed me it. And you have your virtual assistant, which you can either tap it to bring up the Volvo one or hold it to bring up your specific phone virtual assistant. And then on the left side, you have the cruise control, which you can set, increase, and decrease by five mile an hour increments by default, as well as the cruise follow distance. Um, you can have that adjusted from one to five. So I typically leave it th at three, um, but that's all possible. And then you can left and right will throw you between adaptive cruise control as well as the full pilot assist. I love the pilot assist. It works quite well. Um, and then you have your speed limit information up in the top as well as up in your actual heads up display. And now my favorite part of the interior, the Bowers and Wilkins. This is a $3,200 option to give you the ultimate audiophile experience. I really do think it's the best sound system I've ever heard in a car. Um, it looks great. You have the center tweeter rising up above the dashboard like a submarine resurfacing. And then you have the tweeters and mid-range drivers in the doors as well as the woofers lower in the door. Um, they have beautiful metal grills. And uh, the tweeter, especially the one in the center, that really carries the Bowers and Wilkins um, stamp, if you will. That a lot of their high-end speakers for home theater have that same tweeter that's kind of rounded, rising up from it. Um, I know Bowers and Wilkins and Volvo actually partnered with this. The Volvo went to them and was like, "Hey, we need to design a car to really work well with a premium sound system." So they designed the doors together, as well as the dash, and you know all the tuning. And it's very, very well sorted. Um, people who have done extensive testing have found that the frequency response is very linear across the whole band, which is not common, especially in cars. If you go over to the applications, you can go to sound experience, which lets you adjust the sound optimization for your vehicle, which is really interesting. So you can optimize it entirely for the driver. So all speakers in the car are timed and tuned to adjust to just the driver's ears. Then you can change it to all or rear but then you can also go in and individually stage it with more intensity or more envelopment. And then you can go into the concert hall and jazz club effects, which just let me read this. This sound setting recreates the acoustics of the Gothenburg concert hall inside the vehicle. The concert hall built in 1935 is renowned for its excellent acoustics. This unique design and beautiful maple walls provide a sound that is spacious, warm, and clear. How awesome is that? 
Up here you have the auto dimming mirror, which is a nice size, um, looks nice, relatively frameless. And then here you have the button to close and open the shade, which will cover the full length moonroof, um, as well as open the front part of the moonroof if you choose to. The moonroof really is a nice addition, nice touch, um, makes the back seats especially feel much more open and free. Um, speaking of the back seats though, let's go check those out and see how comfortable they are. Okay, so here we are in the back of the Volvo XC60. Um, it is a really nice place to be. I am very comfortable. I'm sitting behind myself and um, I have plenty of leg room, a few inches to spare with the knees, a few inches above the head. Your Bowers and Wilkins grills extend back here. You have your own lighting controls up above. You have a couple USB-C ports down here to charge your phones, as well as this center part, which will have a weird little storage tray here. Another little storage tray inside here, plus the cup holders that extend out. This kind of feels like a flimsy cup holder, but for some reason the way it deploys feels nice. So I'm kind of torn on how to feel about that. But yeah, overall it's very nice. The center seat is a bit less so. Um, yeah, the back is not nearly as comfortable, neither is the seat, and you have this big transmission tunnel kind of in the way of your legs. So, yes, it's technically a five-seat vehicle. Uh, I would argue four seats is probably the most you'd want for any sort of road trip. You do have these nice climate vents on either side. I like that they're up here instead of down in the middle. But there are no climate controls for the back in this particular trim. Something else nifty is this booster sheet option. So you can pull that up in the front and boost it back, and then there you go. You have suddenly a nice booster seat for small ones. So let's go drive the Volvo XC60. Putting it into reverse here, we got the mirrors folding down, showing me the ground. Nice backup camera. So I did charge it up this morning. It's a plug-in hybrid, um, and it lets me know that I have about 15 miles left. Um, when I finished charging, it said 18 miles, and that is about the advertised range of electric-only capability. So if you were to put it into pure mode, it would stay in electric. So let's actually do that. Now it's saying, no matter how hard I jump on it, it's staying with the electric power. And on the quote-unquote tachometer, or the power meter on the right side, um, you have your fuel gauge, which will show you, you know, how much gas you have, but also a battery gauge. And so right now I'm just over three quarters of a battery. Below that you have the estimated range based on fuel, but also the estimated battery range before that's relatively depleted. When it is depleted, you actually have to plug it back in to fully recharge it. It will still become a hybrid once the battery is depleted enough, but you, you won't get near the economy as you would by plugging in your battery every time you want to use your car. It is a very quiet, nice cabin to ride in though. You don't hear hardly anything outside of it. You could have a whisper conversation with your passengers, unless your Bowers and Wilkins is blasting at full volume, which I have been doing quite a bit. But then again, it lets you enjoy your music that much more. So let's put it into power mode. Instantly you hear the engine start kicking in. It's an interesting symphony of sounds when you try to gun it in power mode. Um, you hear the turbo spooling up, the engine goes full speed, and the electric motors are helping it all along. So it's, it's definitely a teamwork mentality underneath the hood and um, it's fine but it feels really delayed you have that definite turbo lag um, the engine sounds are kind of nice I, some people complain about too much engine sound for a car that you think should be quiet and composed the adaptive cruise control works really well the pilot assist works extraordinarily well it doesn't freak out when the car in front of you decides to suddenly switch lanes and someone else comes in. It just kind of gradually corrects itself to the situation.
then the dynamic power meter on the right is really cool. There's kind of this ready point where it's horizontal. Anything below that is recharging the battery through regenerative braking. And above that is this dynamic blue line that will adjust to let you know when you're using electricity versus gasoline. And it will show you the breakover point. So if I'm just gingerly driving along right now, it's saying, you know, up to this certain point, it'll be on electric. But if I try to gun it, it then kicks into the engine and that takes over from there. So very interesting. I love how this drives and the power delivery is really quite good. So actual driving dynamics are really good. I like this air suspension. That's another $1,800 option that I would probably go for. Um, just the, the matter of the adjustable height based on whether you go off-road mode, which raises the car, or sport mode, which lowers the car. And you can even set it to lower or raise when you park. Uh, let's say you want to park and get out of a slightly lower CUV. It also performs quite well in the corners. Uh, it seems to be damped really well, and I know you can adjust that in the settings as well as your steering controls. But I'm really impressed with it. I like how it drives. It's sporty enough to have fun, but you also are sitting in this elegant cockpit just enjoying the scenery. I was driving in a blizzard last night, and it performed really well there too. The all-wheel drive system kicked in every time I wanted it to be, and I never felt overly scared. I did drive very slow and safe, and it felt like it kind of picked up the rest. So the safety systems, the safety system seemed to work really well. Um, even when the visibility was so low, it seemed to you know, view the car in front of me, and you could tell the warning was on of saying, hey, I will brake for you if you don't brake soon. Every time I get a car with a heads-up display, it's one of my favorite features. It's so simple and subtle, but it just helps me a lot. It has my speed as well as the speed limit and even the additional signs like school zone or in this case right now it says do not pass. And something else I really like about Volvos is they, they kind of treat you as an adult. Um, and by that I mean their warning systems and all their you know nannies if you will, they chime but they don't chime obsessively. You know, if you undo your seatbelt because you have to change something, maybe you are doing it safely at a stoplight where you know you have a couple minutes. Many other cars would chime indefinitely until you went into park or something. And Volvo just kind of lets you know, but then backs off. And it does that for all sorts of things. You can control the safety systems and say, you know, hey, I don't want to be warned with audio that I'm crossing the white line on the edge of the road. Maybe I need to repeatedly because of a construction zone. And it's nice that you can control all of that. It's nice with Volvo because everything just works. The automatic wipers work really well, and you can even adjust how automatic they are, how intense they are when they come on, when they sense the rain. The automatically dimming brights work, um, and you can adjust that. You can say how much you want it to dip and how fast. It's just everything is so laid out in a way that you have full control but you're not at the same time you're not overwhelmed with all the options there's a lot of cars i have left to drive this year but this so far has got to be one of my favorite even the color this is somewhat of a blue denim metallic and in the interior of the blonde napa leather i just this is probably very much so how i would spec my volvo Okay, so let's summarize. This is a Swedish masterpiece. I think Scandinavian design is one of my favorite design languages. It's very simplified and functional. And that is how I would summarize this car. It's beautiful, it's elegant, and it's fairly understated. They have everything you need, but they don't overpower you with too many bells and whistles that you would never use. And I love the direction Volvo took with it. It looks beautiful, it drives very well, it's comfortable, and again, that sound system, I can't even handle it. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking for excuses to go drive just to listen to my favorite music, mostly Taylor Swift. But this has really helped me appreciate Volvo as a company. They put all their extensive safety features as standard across the lineup because that is some of the value they have. I definitely find myself marveling at the engineering as well, just the fact that they have so many things they can do with this drivetrain. 
Volvo does have a great standard warranty from the factory, but they also have really good extended warranties, and that's probably something I would consider on this car, just given all the things that go into the engineering of the drivetrain and the power plant. But let us know in the comments what you think. Um, would you consider this versus some of the competitors? Would you consider this size of Volvo? It really is fantastic, and we'll see you guys very soon in another video. Peace.